This is YouTube News. Why Amazon bought PillPack for $753 million, and what happens next? It was May 2018, and PillPack COTJ Parker was in Seattle to meet with a small contingent from Amazon. Suitors had been swarming around his online pharmacy, which was taking on CVS and Walgreens and growing rapidly in the process. Walmart was deep in talks with the Boston-based startup, and pharmaceutical maker Novartis was also hovering. But bankers from Frank Quattroni's Catalyst Partners suggested that Parker and co-founder and product chief Elliot Cohen fly across country for a meeting with one particular Amazon executive, Nader Kebani, a 14-year company veteran and guest concert pianist with the Seattle Symphony, who'd recently been named Amazon's vice president of consumables. Kebani shared Parker's concern about the pharmacy industry and the dominant player's inability or unwillingness to put the consumer first. Eventually, Parker and Cabani were the only ones doing the talking, as all the other participants faded into the background. And from there it didn't take long for Parker to decide that the bidding had ended. He was selling the company to Amazon. On June 28, Amazon announced that it was buying PillPack for an undisclosed sum, later revealed as $753 million, snapping up a company that delivers most of the medications consumers can get from their local drugstore packaged in convenient white packets so people will remember to take them, along with automatic refills and 24-7 customer support. Shares of CVX, Walgreens and Rite Aid tumbled on concern that Amazon was further encroaching on their territory after already taking a huge chunk of the market for toiletries and household goods. In the press release Jeff Wilkie, the head of Amazon's worldwide consumer business, said the companies would work together to help consumers save time, simplify their lives and feel healthier. What Wilkie didn't say was that Parker, the son of a New Hampshire pharmacist, had plans to surpass $1 billion in revenue by 2020, or that PillPack would soon be negotiating with large insurers to get its service into the hands of many more people while aggressively building out its technology to serve them. Almost 11 months later and about $100 million richer, Parker's title is still PillPack CEO, and the only noticeable differences to the outside are that his website now says an Amazon company under the logo and Amazon has a new landing page introducing Prime members to the service. Inside the company Parker, a 33-year-old pharmacist turned internet entrepreneur, is the face of Amazon's audacious plan to bust into a prescription drug market that to date has represented perhaps the largest and most glaring gap in its retail empire. CNBC spoke to a dozen people close to the founders, including investors, friends and PillPack employees for this story, most of whom asked not to be named because of confidentiality agreements. PillPack declined to make Parker or Cohen available for an interview and neither have spoken publicly since the deal was finalized. Amazon declined to comment and Cabani didn't respond to a request for comment. Here's a glimpse of what Amazon is now attacking. Spending on U.S. prescription medications is approaching $500 billion a year and growing up to 7% annually, according to IQVIA, a provider of health data. Roughly 60% of American adults have at least one chronic illness, such as heart disease, cancer or diabetes, and 40% have two or more, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The retail drug market for prescriptions has been dominated by large pharmacy chains, including CVS and Walgreens, and independent pharmacies, which all count on a few middlemen known as pharmacy benefit managers PBMs, to negotiate prices, as well as a handful of large drug distributors. Other than Wilkie's statement on the day of the deal, Amazon hasn't uttered a peep about what it plans to do with PillPack. What we know is that Amazon acquired an 800-plus person workforce and a high-growth, very low-margin business that, like a traditional retailer, uses the majority of its revenue to pay for inventory. We also know that Amazon has not only been continuously adding household products to its marketplace, but has also been establishing its own brands for things like batteries, toilet paper, light bulbs and towels. As delivery times come down to one day for Prime members, what's the point of ever driving to your neighborhood pharmacy? PillPack has spent years going through the hard work of getting licenses to ship to every state except Hawaii, and built a system that automatically manages refills and works with insurers on behalf of customers. It sorts pills and provides dispensers to make everything as easy as possible for users. Fred Destin, 
An early PillPack investor describes it as a complicated and expensive space with a potentially big prize. In other words, it's the type of business that Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos loves huge dollars, antiquated technology, and so many regulatory barriers that the smart money is staying far away. Bezos also knows something about the industry, having taken a board seat at Drugstore.com in the 1990s after Amazon invested in the company. Walgreens acquired the online drugstore in 2011 for $429 million and shut it down five years later. It won't be an easy market for Amazon to win. PillPack needs relationships with PBMs like Express Scripts and Caremark, which is owned by CVS, to reach the masses of consumers who get their medicines through insurers. Those businesses were worried about Amazon even before it acquired PillPack because it's really the only company that could conceivably break up their control if it were to jump into the distribution market and pressure drug manufacturers to lower prices. PillPack also was a concern because it had the potential to take substantial market share from the incumbents. Amazon bought the one company in the space that all the PBMs and other pharmacy businesses were threatened by, said Yuman Choi, a health tech investor at Bain Capital Ventures. The challenge is now they put a stake in the ground and the flag has been planted. Amazon has to contend with the added problems that come with a disparate ecosystem of physicians insurance companies and medical records providers, all with their own silos and disconnected systems. Amazon and PillPack may be able to create a better experience for consumers when it comes to delivering medicines, but playing a role in fixing the other inefficiencies may be out of their purview. There's a lot that's not under their control, said Eric Percher, an equity analyst covering the pharmacy supply chain at Nephron Research. It's not clear if Amazon can change the way that the patient interacts with the pharmacy supply chain and the payer, he said. Parker, who has sandy blonde hair, an unkempt beard and thick-rimmed glasses, doesn't come across as a hard-charging executive scheming to take down the industry superpowers. Zen Chu, a PillPack investor and advisor who teaches healthcare innovation at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, joked that he looks more like a member of a Grateful Dead cover band, but with exceptional clarity of vision. The pharmacy business, is in Parker's blood. Growing up, his dad owned a pharmacy in Concord, New Hampshire, where the younger Parker personally checked labels on pill bottles and delivered medicines to nursing homes and assisted living facilities. He went to pharmacy school at the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences in Boston, and while there, would periodically go to events at nearby MIT to look for students exploring innovative work in health technology. That's where he met Cohen, who was attending business school after studying computer science at the University of California at Berkeley. At MIT, Cohen co-founded a program called Hacking Medicine for students interested in medical entrepreneurship. Cohen wasn't sold on the idea behind PillPack until he went home and saw his dad, who had undergone quadruple bypass heart surgery while in high school, struggling to manage multiple medications. He texted Parker to say he was in, and the pair spent a weekend putting together a prototype which won the 2012 Hacking Medicine Hackathon and landed them checks from MIT's Chuan and his wife and fellow investor Katie Ray. In 2014, the year PillPack started serving customers, Parker's dad joined as one of the company's first pharmacists in the office in Manchester, New Hampshire, located 20 minutes from Concord. The founders would drive to the local IKEA to get furniture for the pharmacy. At internal meetings, Parker talked about the opportunities to modernize the pharmacy experience and to develop an aspirational brand, like what Warby Parker created in the stodgy eyeglasses market, rather than constantly reminding people that they're sick. TJ used to talk at all hands about the local CVS, where you'd see aisles stacked with three-liter bottles of Coke with fluorescent lights and gray carpeting, said AJ Resnick, a director of analytics at PillPack from 2015 to 2016. In his mind, that wasn't the experience that people deserve. Growth was slow for the first couple years because PillPack had to file for licenses in every state and needed to open physical retail stores in certain states to stay in network with the PBMs. It also had an advertising problem because ad teams at Google and Facebook mistakenly labeled PillPack as a drug manufacturer, which required it to include all sorts of safety issues that weren't relevant. Fortunately for Parker, He'd taken a small check from Kevin Colloran of Slow Ventures, an early member of Facebook's ad sales team. 
Kalaran connected Parker to the right people at Facebook to clear up the matter and get Pillpack off what the investor called the naughty list. Once they got on Facebook, YouTube News.